And joining me now in the studio is Mr. Emeka Mba, the director of Quest Tech Media Limited. Thank you for joining us this morning, Mr. Emeka. My pleasure. Thank you. Now, it, it seems the world over, it, it seems that the political leaders are essentially facing a, a beauty parade. Yeah. And which of our governors and leaders are getting it right, in your own opinion? Well, I think off the face of it, I mean, without a doubt, um, this has been a challenge for, for every country, okay. for um, world leaders. Um, but I think for us locally here, I mean, without a doubt, I think that Lagos State is doing something right, definitely doing something right. Um, initially, it didn't start well. There was a bit of controversy. But I think they've ramped up. Um, the leadership of the, of the governor has been excellent. As far as this is concerned, this particular crisis, he's done a tremendous job. He's uh, very regular updates to the people because information is critical at this point. Uh, in my view, um, in my own experience, I think that information, timely and, and um, information is really a matter of life and death in this kind of crisis. Oh, and prior to this um, lockdown cessation order yeah. that was passed by the president, people did, did say that the Lagos mm -hmm. State government was on top of this matter yeah. and that they felt they were not duly consulted and that yeah. there was no more deliberation that brought about the shutdown and that it wasn't necessary at all because they believed the governor had it um, in check. Would, yeah. you, would you agree with that? I think, I think there, is, there, there was a notion uh, before the federal government, before the president himself, um, you, you know, made his speech and ordered the, yeah. the, the, the national, I mean, there's a lockdown with regards to Lagos State and Ogun State and, and Abuja. Um, you know, as I said, Lagos State seemed to have it under control. But this is, a, this is a national problem. This is not a problem that's localized only within Lagos State. I mean, so for example, Lagos could be doing a tr tremendous job. If Ogun State is not doing, given the cr close proximity, yeah. you will find that you will have this, this, this disease go. Uh, it's transnational, transborder. Yeah. So it required a national, um, should I say, a national strategy to deal with it. And I think that's, that's the essence of having the president himself make the speech that he made. Um, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was important that the president, as a leader of the country, um, make that kind of speech. And I, I think that, it, you know, it helped. Um, uh, some people say, yeah, it might have come late, but I think it was, it was important that he did it, and I think it was a very good speech. That he, right. that he now, made. we keep hearing of Lagos as a pace setter, and yeah. I'm, I'm just wondering, in your own opinion, what do you think put Lagos ahead, I mean, from the get-go, at an advantage over all the states? You know, for me, I think two things, really. Um, um, the first thing is that, you know, the benefit of experience, the benefit of the Ebola, um, the Lagos State already had an infectious diseases uh, particular department or unit that was ba that's based in Yaba, and, and, and they, you know, if you remember the late um, Dr. Adedevo, who did yes. a tremendous job yes. in, in helping us to, um, fight Ebola, and sadly lost her life in that regard. But, you know, so you had that department, you had people who had been trained by the World Bank, by the CDC of America, by other international agencies, so there was a certain, certain level of preparedness, but I don't think anyone is pre was prepared for for COVID-19, mm. for corona, because of the high rate of infectiousness that this disease has. All right, now let's bring our attention to our legislature. Yep. They seem um, somewhat a little bit quiet at this moment, but mm -hmm. we hear that the reps are asking for a two-month electricity um, bill waiver. Uh, what's, your, what's your take on this? Right step in the I right mean, direction? I look, um, I don't want to put down the national national legislature, okay. but I, I just think that they have not they have not lived up the expectation in my view. They haven't, um, you know, they they they, they, didn't, they don't seem to have the understanding of what is required and giving the backing to the to both the national government and the local local government. Um, but it's you know it's not too late. I don't think that we don't have enough electricity to start with. Yeah. So getting two months off, well, it, it's some benefit, and, and I, I will take it. I will, I will take it. Yeah. Now, in, in comparison to, to to the world leaders, the, the global stage yeah. and, and leaders of the world, and to our leaders here in Nigeria, what what do you think they could do more? I think so. So for me, the reason why not that we haven't had pandemics before epidemics and pandemics. We had SARS in 2008 and we had, we had all kinds of diseases. But I think this particular one is because of the breakdown of international order. You had isolationist governments from Italy to US, the UK, Brexit, different countries wanting to go their own way. Yes. And this is a disease that doesn't go in one way. It's transnational. So you needed an international coalition, some type of leadership internationally. That used to be the role of the U.S., but the U.S., obviously, as you've seen under Trump, has sort of re, you know, reneged or pulled back from, from his leadership. And, I, and with all countries going their own way, this is really this was just a disaster made in, in a petri dish and I, and I think that you know what is required now is some type of international leadership someone has to step up the plate i don't know whether china can do it 
Um, you know, there's now a little bit of people uh, accusing China of all sorts of things, but I, but I, I think this is really the time for an international, for, for the whole world, especially the, the, the strong leaders to come together and format a plan that will help us get through this. Okay, great. Now, this is it. I mean, most times our, our leaders feel that just passing yeah. a law, I mean, just solves the problem. And, and we, see, we see the need for enforcement. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. there was a lockdown order, a cessation order, um, with exceptions of um, essential services yeah. like the supermarket, pharmaceutical stores, and the rest of them. But in recent days, we've seen a whole lot of people on the streets. What, what is going wrong here? What so, would you assume is going I mean, wrong here? So my view has always been that uh, we need to, and I was reading a, an, an article written by some scientists from India who said that, look, um, a lockdown will not work in an economy that is largely subsistence based, informal. People live on a day to day basis. So you need to have a strategy that recognizes that particular issue, um, the way people, the way the economy runs. And I think that's what's more important in this, in this case. So you're going to find breaches on the marginal on, in, in, within communities. So what you need is community action, where members of the community take this as a challenge on their own and find ways to mitigate the, the, the spread of this, this, this horrible disease.